I'm, I don't. I don't think I'll get into the specifics of what the doctors say and all that. You know, I think we'll just kind of wait till we get the the full report and the full process over, and and then we'll we'll talk about it. How happy were you when you found out that Will Taylor was going to stay at Clemson, and then what role realistically did you see him having? In the Clemson oh, super excited. I mean, you know, he, he's. He's he's this is a this is a this is a really good player and uh, he's going to be a quarterback for us and you know eventually I think he will uh, eventually long term I think he'll end up playing the slot for us and being a returner and a lot of different things and, and just being a dynamic guy and but he'll he'll always have his hand in the quarterback spot you know for his whole career uh, but for this year we're, we're gonna we're gonna train him and build a foundation um, and. Um, you know, because he can do it. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a, a it's ain't a myth. Uh, this is this is a guy that can he could play his whole career at quarterback. Uh, but I think you know, for us, you know, again, it's just one of those things that you go back to 18. You know, um, I can't remember who asked me the question in, after the spring game. Like one of y'all 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 asked me if I'd ever been in such a dire quarterback situation. And I said, man, y'all got a short memory. Uh, I don't guess y'all remember 2018. We had Trevor as a freshman and Chase as a redshirt freshman, and Hunter Renfro was our third teamer. Uh, that was pretty dire. And Will Spires was our fourth teamer. So we're we're way 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 ahead of that that game. But but I learned a lot in that. You know, especially the kids you know transferring and things like that. I mean, you better have a plan. Um, but Will's a guy that three years from now, all of a sudden you need a quarterback. He can go play quarterback and have a foundation of it, you know. As with Hunter, we were behind the eight ball a little bit because he was an option quarterback in high school, uh, and so you know, ball handling, zone read, those type of things. It wasn't it, he had to he had a little bit more of a learning curve. Uh, whereas everything we do is very natural to Will, and he can throw the football. I mean, he can do it all. He brings a lot to the table. So he's a different dynamic, a different dimension at the position, and um, I think he will he will bring something to the table for his career. Um, you know, there, but but always kind of give us that guy in the back pocket uh, that if we if we get in a bind, you know, here's a guy that could go win for you. Um, so he's he's uh, we're incredibly excited that he's here, and, and so is Monty. Uh, we we got we got us a great young player, and it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun, and and you know, we'll turn down a lot. I mean, this was what he wanted to do. This was his. You know, he, he grew up, he's wanted to play at Clemson, he wants to run down the hill, he wants to he wants to play for the Tigers. And um, he, he he values this experience. Um, got a wonderful family and, and just excited to, to have him be a part of it. And what can Will or the entire quarterback room learn from having a guy like Todd Foley around if and when you've had it officially at SAP? Perspective. You know, he's been there, done that. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, you name it. He, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's got a wealth of, of knowledge and a wealth of, of life experience. Yeah, but what's, where's the fine line between you wanting your guys to get, you know, their fair share or something out of name, image, and likeness, and yet it not, especially during the season, being a distraction in the pursuit of that? Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I think that that's going to that's gonna be everybody's individual decision. I think that's one of the um, unintended consequences. The intentions of it are very good. Um, you know, I think that it's, uh, it's great that guys can go work. I mean, there's just a lot of common sense to it. You know, again, if, if um, you know, you want to go back to your hometown and have a, have a, have a, high, a high school or a kid camp, you know, you should be able to do that. And, um, there's a lot of those things that make a lot of sense, but there's some unintended consequences that'll come along the way. There'll be some, there'll be some silliness along the way, and it, but it'll eventually settle out and in a good spot, and, and we'll, we'll figure it out there. But uh, these are young people. And young people can be emotional and irrational, and and, and then you, you you throw money in there, and you just hope that everybody can stay focused. But that's our job, is to help them, you know, navigate and, and to educate them and equip them and help them. Um, you know, our, our, our purpose of our program hasn't changed one bit. That hasn't changed anything, it, you know. So just we've got to continue to do a good job of helping them achieve the goal like we've done for all We have 98% graduation right here. Um, you know, nine out of ten years, top ten academically. Um, us, Duke, and Northwestern. 
you know, the only school in the country, nine years in a row, top 25 in football and academics. Uh, you know, so uh, the mission of our program has not changed one bit. It just, this is just, and we've been doing Paul Journey for 12 years. You know, we're not trying to, oh, we're going to figure out a way to, we've been, we've been doing this for a long time. This is just another one of those tools we have to help them uh, acqu acquire and help them navigate because there's going to be a lot of questions because we can't facilitate, we can't coordinate. Um, we can just educate and, and nap, help them navigate and make sure, again, they've got the, the tools they need because there's, you know, there's laws, there's taxes, there's things like that. And, I mean, I worked all through college. I mean, I, there was never a day that I didn't work in college, ever. I mean, I was either cutting grass, umpiring baseball, or um, cleaning gutters. I did that my whole, all through college. It was, I, I didn't have any choice. But I never went to Coach Stallings and said, hey, uh, Coach, I'm, I'm going to miss that practice. i got to go clean these gutters today. I won't be there. And, and that was, it, you know, so the biggest thing is making sure they know the rules, you know, because there are rules in place and uh, that they're transparent, uh, that we provide them with great resources, and it's on their time, you know. I mean, it's, it's got to be on their time, but you, you just hope that um, that doesn't become the focus. You know, because it's very short-term money. And, if, you know, you hope that short-term doesn't become the focus over the long-term uh, value of your education, your experience, your development, you know. Um, but that's certainly a potential consequence for some kids. Uh, but hopefully we can do a great job as a program in, in helping uh, if they get off track. You know, kind of having the bumpers on the on that, like y'all got y'all just some of y'all needed some bumpers on that bowling uh, <laughs> that bowling lane out there. Uh, but you know, it's kind of our job to we all know what the the target is to make sure we got the proper bumpers on the lane. You know, because you know they, they they get that way every now and then. That's that's our job to help navigate and keep them on track. Dabo, after the NIL came to be, a lot of people were resurfacing old quotes from you about quitting before players get paid. How do you react when people start saying that when that was so long ago? Well, we, well, well first of all, you know, we live in a world now where um, not everybody does much research. You know, you go in the bathroom and you hear somebody on the phone in the third stall and, and that's your source. <laughs> Just calling it like it is. And that's the headline. Uh, and um, I think people hear what they want to hear and then and then unfortunately a lot of people write what they want to write you know that that will fit the story that they need and it's just not accurate I never I, I've never had a problem with name image like I, I think it should have been more I don't I don't I, I would have I'm not the, if I'd have been the czar I'd have done it differently um, because I don't think everybody's going to have any op much opportunity with it some will but but not everybody will have you know opportunity I would have liked to have seen it tied to Graduation, education, um, you know, 1.7% of these kids go to, co go to the NFL. That's a fact. 98% uh, of them are not going to go to the NFL. So, you know, I would have I strategized a little differently, and, um, but I didn't get a vote in that. It is what it is. And, and, and the other fact is 80% of NFL players within two years of being done are bankrupt and divorced. And these are mid-20s to 30-year-olds. So now we kind of brought all this to the – so, you know, my goal and my, what I have always valued is education and graduation and, and the development process as a man. That's my passion. That's what I've always valued. And, and um, uh, so uh, what I said, whenever that was, I still say, you know, I am against professionalizing college athletics where we get away from the collegiate model and the value of a degree and the value of an education. And, uh, you know, that's – I've never, ever said I'm against name, image, likeness. I think it's a lot of common sense. I think it could be more. I think it could have been tied to the – more to the, to the education process, and so everybody would have had a little more opportunity. Uh, but I said that whenever it was, but people hear what they want to hear. You know, so I just laugh about it. It's really, what else are you going to do? I don't. I guess I could go. I guess I should sign up for Twitter, and I, then I could, I could be one of those people, and I could just go back at everybody, uh, you know, and spend my life, you know, uh, correcting whoever's putting 
crazy information out there, but it just comes with the territory. But you know what? It just means we win. Because if we were if we weren't winning around here, nobody nobody even talked about it. Coach, uh, how good was it to finally be able to see some of your recruits uh, in person? I was awesome. I was telling, I've been I've been talking to you. Uh, I mean, it, we, we signed three people I never even met. McCoop, not only have I not met him, he had never even been to Clemson. Uh, you know, he, he tried to commit like in August of last year, and I wouldn't let him. And coaches are all mad at me, and I'm, I'm like, look, the kid, does he's never even been here. He doesn't – I mean, he's never – I mean, and I kept thinking it was going to open up. Like, maybe in October they would open it up, let kids come into games, and, you know, and then all of a sudden, okay, he's committed, and then now he wants to go visit everywhere. And, I, you know, I was like, let's just, let's just see what happens. And then and – then, Finally, when I guess it was about October when they said, "All right, they're they're not gonna it's closed till January," and he, the kid's supposed to come to school. And I'm like, "Well," I said, "Andrew, you're gonna be my first ever guy ever uh, that I've never met, and you've never been here uh, to 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 come be a tiger." But what an awesome kid! And literally, so the first time I met him was in January when he got here with his family. I'd never met Bubba Chandler ever. Uh, he committed. And he'd been committed since I guess April of 20 maybe and then uh, somewhere in that range and, and I met him when he came in for our camp this summer to, to work camp. That's the first time I'd met him. I mean and, and I mean it's just I yeah, never met Nate uh, till he got here. So just a just a crazy crazy experience. Uh, you know you felt like you knew him you know thankful for the zoom and, and the technology that allowed us to still kind of be connected but uh, yeah, that was that was a it was a unique experience, but a great group of guys. You know, we, the mid years that came in did an awesome job academically. We had the sp highest spring GPA we've had uh, ever, and uh, those guys did an awesome job. And then the guys that came in this summer, uh, it's been good to see them get off to a good start. Yeah, well, some of the assistants were saying this was the most physical spring that there's been since they've been here. Would you agree with that? And how did that kind of come with that? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I think we. We just kind of, I mean, I think it was physical from the aspect there was a lot of competition, you know, um, and a lot of a lot of veterans, a lot of lettermen, a lot of guys, you know, again, competing uh, for opportunity. But, you know, we didn't really structure practice any differently. Uh, but the intensity was was definitely uh, the way you'd like it to be. I think we, we got better and made a lot of progress. Speaking of um, how is he doing with his rehab on his arm? He's great. He's great. He's, he's ready to go. Devil, is the transfer portal different than what you thought it would be when the concept was first sort of hatched? No, it's about what I thought it'd be. Crazy. Uh, I mean, you know, that's another thing that I I, I, I don't get a vote in those things, but um, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen that different. You know, because again, young people it make emotional and irrational decisions and irrational decisions a lot not all the time but but and now you throw in um, uh, you know you got name image likeness you got tampering you've got uh, uh, no reason for pause no consequences uh, you, know, you know the grass is greener and and it's really not it's, it's the grass is you know green where you water it and um, but uh, you know there's I just think that, again, there's some unintended consequences there as well. I think there's a lot of schools that aren't going to sign high school kids. And, you know, there are a lot of schools that are just going to sign transfers because now the transfers, are, they got to be, now there are consequences, right? Because now they've already transferred, so, which I don't understand that. Like, why is it a one-time transfer? I mean, can you not, I mean, you only screw up one time, like make a bad decision, or a coach can only pack up and leave, or only one coach can be mean to you or whatever. I mean. I mean, I, hey, well, why does it matter? Uh, if you're going to open it up, open it up. But no, I think it's crazy. I mean, there's there's so many kids in the portal and, and not enough spots for them. So again, I think uh, the intention is good, and I agree with allowing everybody to be able to transfer. I just personally would have tied it to education again. I would have tied it to, okay, you can transfer anywhere you want, anytime you want, but you sit a year. And but guess what? When when you when you you know, get to your senior year or your, your graduation, you get that year back. So you don't lose anything, but it just creates a little bit of reason for 
pause because I think we we may not all agree on a lot of things, and y'all probably don't believe in half the things I say, but surely we can all agree on we we probably thought differently at 22 than we did at 18, you know, and you process things differently, you know, as you mature a little bit, and uh, things aren't usually as sometimes as we perceive them as young people. You know, I've got three sons, and I know this, the insurance for 23-year-olds is a lot different than it is for a 16-year-old. There's a reason for that. It's called judgment. Uh, you know, it's not, it, the judgment is different as you get a little older, a little more mature, but it's about what I thought it'd be. It's just crazy. And, and uh, I think there's a, the intent is good. Again, a lot of unintended consequences will come about. I mean, again, if I wasn't at Clemson, I wouldn't sign a high school kid. Like if I'm, if I'm Jeff Scott at South Florida, why are you going to sign a high school kid? Because if they're good, somebody's just going to take them right off your roster. You know? But if you go sign a bunch of transfers uh, that fit what you want, um, they're, there, they're there. You know? Because now there are some consequences. So it's just, you know, and I don't think that's good. You know? I think there's, there'll be some dynamics that'll come about that, that uh, you know, but that'll, that'll create some, some consequences not everybody foresaw, but uh, you know, I'm not against anybody being able to transfer. I think that's great. I just, I just think uh, with no reason for pause, with NIL, with agents, with tampering, with you name it, uh, no consequences. It, it kind of leads to no conscience, if you will. Now, what was it like to hear that Justin Foster would be back, and what are you going to need to see from him leading up to the start of the season? Oh, I've already seen it. Uh, I've already seen everything I need to see from him. He's, he's, a, he's an old savvy dog, man. That guy's a ball player. He's in a great spot, in great shape mentally. He just walked by a second ago. Um, you know, that was a great call. I, I, I didn't expect that one uh, in May. Uh, and the funny thing is, is I told him in January, I said, why don't you just wait till May? I was like, what, what's going to change between now and May? Uh, today and you know but he was he just he just he was just ready to move on and, and just just didn't cut and then all of a sudden by the time may rolled around here and he'd gotten out in that real world a little bit and uh and then he and then he's feeling great and he's like you know what i think i want to play he said can i still come back i said yes sir come on back we'll take you so that was a great call and i'm excited for him to be able to finish the way he wants to finish and, and just he's just such a leader He's one of the most respected guys on this team. He's one of the strongest guys. This guy is strong, and he, and he just brings a ton of experience, you know, to the position to go along. I mean, you got five starters back at DN. Uh, so it's a lot like that 2014 team uh, when, you know, we had – we were rotating uh, Shaq and Vic and Corey and Tavares and Dodd. You know, we had all them guys. And, and, and Dan Brooks, he's sitting in there, and he's got – the only guy that had really separated was Grady. And, and so then it was like, okay, well, who's going to run out there first? Is it, is it, is it DJ Reader? Is it Carlos Watkins? Is it Deshaun Williams? All them guys are still in the NFL. Is it Josh Watson? Who is it? And, man, you know, Dan, I, I never even knew a lot of times who was running out there until they ran out there. Because Dan would, I think he'd stand up and watch how they walked through Tiger Walk before he'd, he'd make a decision all the way through pregame warmups on who was going to run out there first. So uh, Justin, Justin brings up, I mean, that's just like I said, it's, it's like having Skowski back uh, and Nolan back. I mean, just it's incredible to have that type of experience and leadership and commitment uh, on that side of the ball. Yeah, but was there any thought of 